Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I am wicked excited to be here today and to what we're going to talk about. I am going to try to make this sucker fast because it is super duper. <laughs> it is so good hot up here in my office, you guys. I got the tank top on. I'm like sweating already and I just shut off the fan. All right. That's neither here nor there. But this is what we're going to this is what we're going to talk about today. So if you are on my email list, you saw that I recently uh, sent out uh, an email and the title of it was, are you willing to enter the cave? And it's all about this thing called the quest. So I want to talk to you about my relationship, not only with this word, where it came from, how it's influenced my life and how it is showing up again and again and again and again, repeatedly in my life. So just stay with me. I'm going to do some storytelling. I'm going to make some spiritual connections and I'm going to talk about something uh, that I'm creative, that an offer, uh, a way to uh, work with me in the world that I am just so, I'm so jazzed. You guys, I can hardly stand myself. <laughs> oh my God. And we're back. Get it together. KK. Okay. All right. So he has a deal. So I remember and you know you're gonna get you're gonna get much longer versions of some of these stories in my memoir when the book ever eventually comes out. But here's the deal: so when I was, um, you know, a kid after my mother was killed, uh, nobody in my family talked about like what had happened, right? So we would see it on the news, we would see it uh, in the newspaper, we would hear it on the radio, and inevitably some adult because I was 12 years old at the time, but some adult trying to quote unquote protect us would like snap off the TV, shut off the radio, grab the newspaper away, whatever. So, you know, even though I knew what had happened to my mother, that she had been killed, that she had been beaten to death, I didn't know, as we say, uh, what the hell happened? Like, what the hell happened? So when I was 17 years old, I came to a decision that I was going to find out the truth of what happened to her. I was gonna find out what had happened to my mother that night, et cetera, et cetera. And really what I was on, I realized, is that I was on a quest for the truth. I was on a quest for the truth. And when I look back at some of my favorite childhood movies, this makes so much sense to me, right? Um, Rocky, <laughs> The Goonies, uh, Star Wars, even um, Top Gun, right? All of these have within it what Joseph Campbell calls the uh, the, the hero's journey, right? These people who th they're in the uh, original world or as the world used to be, and then something happens and then they are asked to go on some sort of a quest where they go and they have obstacles and then they meet wise teachers and mentors. And then they eventually return back right to the original place to the to the call it the quote unquote normal place or whatever the thing was they head back home but now they have the magical elixir they have the knowledge they have the wisdom they have the ability to not only help themselves but maybe help others or their community or their family or their country or the world right so those kinds of films and movies and that kind of character development the act of that has always fascinated me so here I am at a 17, as a 17 year old kid embarking on kind of my own journey. And it started, it, I mean, it started at a younger age, but it didn't start to really come into the front of my consciousness, I think, until around that age. So that's, that's number one. I recognize like on some level. Now, back then at 17, I never would have called it a quest. I didn't make that connection. This is me at 53 looking back and saying, oh my God, th this was that moment when that happened, when I made that decision to try and find out, right? Like what the hell happened? What's going on? And I started asking a lot of those bigger questions, okay? So that's kind of like the first inkling of, of, of where that came from. Then I head off to college. And in my senior year at BU, at Boston University, 1990, this, uh, this band, this group uh, comes out called A Tribe Called Quest. And when I listened to that, their first album, which had so many incredible songs and hits on it, I just felt like I was transported. Like there was something about um, 
there was something about that music, the rhythm, the beat, even the tone, the quality of the tone of Q-tip, right? One of the singers, it was just like, oh my God. And there was that word quest. And as soon as I saw that, a tribe called quest, I thought, yes, this is my band. This is my sound. These are my people, right? It just like really lit me up. And I grabbed onto that, that word quest. And I was like, I love this word. I love that name, right? So this is just an inkling of how I think the divine is always dropping little breadcrumbs like on our path. And it's so interesting when I work with people in spiritual mentoring and they'll say things to me like, KK, you're not going to believe it. As soon as I da 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 da, as soon as I decided to say yes to working with you, or as soon as I decided to do this, I'm seeing all these signs, all these universal signs as I call them, right? And I always start laughing and I'm like, look, let me just be wicked clear. Number one, that's wicked cool. That's amazing. I'm so happy that you're having these moments and it's it's bringing joy and bubbles and light to you, right? It was just like, holy shit, right? All these coincidences or coinky dinks or you're getting a little nod from your spiritual team. That's amazing. But here's the thing. It's not like all of a sudden your spiritual team has just gotten fucking better at their job, <laughs> right? It's like you, as soon as you said yes, right? It's, and that's something that happens too, right? W.H. Murray has this incredible quote where he basically talks about one of the greatest dream killers is this hesitancy. When we just keep hesitating, we keep sitting on the fence and we're, we're indecisive and we won't, we won't fucking take a leap of faith in our, own, in our own direction for our own good, right? And we hold back and all this stuff. And he says, but once you commit, once you commit, providence will move too. So here was the universe, here was God, the divine, spiritual team, source. There's a thousand names we can call the beloved and the divine, right? I don't get hung up on what people call it. So it was just like these little signs, these little glimpses all along my path. And as I got older, it's again, it's not like all my divine helpers got better at the gig. It's that I started paying better attention, right? So then we have like, you know, number one, number two, and now, um, again, I'm, I'm only going to give snippets because it would be way too long of a podcast. So then when I'm in my twenties, I find myself in a really just brutal and horrible, uh, sexual harassment situation. And I guess that's all I'm going to say about it for now. Other than I was terrified for my life and I lived alone. I had an apartment alone in Burbank and I was just scared out of my mind. My life had been threatened, et cetera, et cetera. And it was also, it had been a long time, right? It had been a long time since I was able to live with an animal. And the apartment building that I was living in, I was not supposed to have any animals. I was not allowed to have animals. And um, I was like, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> At that point, I was like, I don't care. I need a familiar. I need a companion. Animals have always been not only one of my fastest pathways to God, uh, one of my, some of my greatest teachers, but they've been my greatest comforters. They have been my greatest safe place. So I already knew going to the shelter that whatever cat, I knew I couldn't sneak, you know, I couldn't do the dog thing, right? At that point in my life, because uh, I, I could not hide a dog from my landlord <laughs> in my little complex, you know, but I knew I could probably maybe get away with a cat. So, um, I go to the shelter, I go to the animal shelter. And as I'm walking down the rows, all of a sudden I come to this little cage. And before I could even, before I even like get like right in front of the cage, I see this little black furry paw just shoot out, just shoot out and try to get my attention. And it literally stops me in my tracks. And I stand in front of the cage and I see this tiny little black kitten God, you guys, I just fall madly on the spot in love with him. He had green eyes and he was this tiny little being. And I said to him, are you quest? And I shit you not, you guys, he goes like this. And like he purrs and he starts rubbing his face against the thing. And I was like, that's it. I'm a sucker. I'm down for the count. That's it. This is my cat. This is quest. And so quest came home with me. My landlord, of course, finds out I have the cat, but she loved me. So <laughs> I got away with it. Oh, fingers crossed. Good luck for me, spiritual team on the job. So she allowed me to keep him. 
And maybe she did or didn't know like that I was going through a really, really, really tough time in my life. And so Quest was the thing, man. I don't know what I would have done without him. And so here we go again. It's like this idea of, of this quest and having a familiar when you're on this journey. Because let's call a spade a spade, guys. Being, this being human thing can be wicked hard sometimes. It is like life does not stop and ask us, hey, are you, are you okay with what's about to happen? Are you okay with what I'm about to bring to your door? Nobody's, nobody's getting permission here, right? So Quest really helped me uh, kind of get through that. And the most amazing thing was he was this tiny little cat and then he slowly started to grow. And I'll never forget, right, bringing him to his first vet appointment um, in Burbank. And our veterinarian at the time, had he was an amazing gentleman, older gentleman, um, and he had this incredible accent. And the first time he met Quest, he said, oh, hello, how are you doing, big boy? How are you doing, big boy? And that's the thing, this tiny little kitten, little did I know at the time, was like a Maine Coon cat. He grew to be 30 pounds. And he, when he walked in the house, you would hear him. He would thump like in the house. And so Quest traveled with me from California all the way back to the East Coast. So here we come to the next stage of the journey. When I make the transition from living and working with Marion Williamson, going on all these in incredible um, trips and spiritual pilgrimages. So let's go there for a sec. Okay. So before I move back east, um, I end up going on um, a couple of spiritual pilgrimages with Marianne Williamson. So some of you may know her as the author of A Return to Love and many other like famous New York Times bestselling books. So Marianne became, and again, long story for another day, go back and listen to maybe episode two. I think I tell the story there. But Marianne, um, I went on, for, the first trip I went with her on is Egypt. That's a whole other show for another day, a two week spiritual pilgrimage there. But then the second trip that I took with her was um, in July of 1997. Okay, so Marion Williamson, <laughs> spiritual pilgrimage going to England and Ireland. And this was the most unbelievable thing. So it's July 1997, uh, had come back from Egypt a few months later. It's like, okay, opportunity, gonna go to England and Ireland. And so Marianne had become like my, I worked with her obviously, but she was also my spiritual godmother. She was also my mentor. And let me tell you something, the two weeks that I spent in England and Ireland, um, some of the most impactful moments of my life. And, you know, as a kid growing up in like Lawrence Mass in Boston, like I hadn't really been anywhere. It was like Lawrence, Boston, maybe went to Orlando or Florida, I think twice at that point. And then so as a 21 year old kid, I like go out to California and that had been it. Like I hadn't really been anywhere, right? So all of a sudden going to these mystical and magical places, it was like unbelievable. And I, and I know one of the places I couldn't, one of the reasons why I was wicked excited to go on this trip because I knew one of the places, one of the sacred sites that we were gonna go to was in uh, Cornwall. And this was um, where King Arthur was supposedly born. So if you've listened to any of my shows, if you are a, a loyal listener, I'm just going to already tell you right now, hashtag nerd alert. So you guys already know about my love of King Arthur and Merlin the Magician and the Knights of the Round Table. And I did that whole episode called Who's at Your Table? I think that's when you first found out about my uh, me being a huge geek, right? So, well, you may have probably knew that way before that, but that's when I really started talking about this. So um, I was already fascinated as a kid because I was a reader growing up. I always love stories. I always love books. And I always love these epic tales and journeys, as I said, right? That whole hero's journey thing. So I was just totally fascinated by the tales and the legends of like King Arthur and stuff. Um, but I knew that at this site where we were going is the su supposed site of like, um, you know, King Arthur's castle where it had been. And it was also where Merlin's crystal cave was. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it and then I'm gonna hold up some pictures for you to see. So listen as you're gonna to get to see. And uh, those of you, well, watch as you're gonna to get to see. Listen as I'll try to describe it. So Merlin's Crystal Cave. Okay, let me to kind of describe this. So it's this huge cavern and it's located down at the base of these giant rising rocky cliffs, okay? 
you can only access it when the tide is out. You can only access the little beach that you walk across to get into the cave at low tide. Now this cave, this cabin had basically been shaped and molded right from, from the ocean, just kind of like crashing against it. It had been carved out by thousands of years of the sea doing its thing, right? And so the sea just kind of like pounding against this thing. It's so incredible. So as we're about to like go into the cave, my mind was just like running wild, right? It's like all the history. I, and I'm going to say this. You, you can call it whatever you want to call it. There are energetics. Just like we know when we walk into a room, we feel a certain vibe or for, certain energy. Just like we get it off of other people and places and animals or whatever. It's all energy, right? So when you're down there, when you're down in these mystical places where there is so much history and legend and wonder and awe and imagination that, has, that is attached to a place, I'm telling you, there's a particular vibe there, right? So we're down on the beach and as we're crossing the beach to enter the cave, like my imagination is just going wild with like, not just the history there, but all the art, all the artwork, right? There's the books and the stories and the paintings and Fantasia at Disney World, like all this stuff that has come out of this place and these legends. And so, you know, we go inside and, and just taking in the place, the tide is out, right? So you only have a certain window of time to be in there. And I'll never forget being in there. And it was totally, it was like really dark, except at the entrances of the cave that are bringing in the light, right? And I remember sitting in there and just looking around and things are like glistening and, you know, there's like the smell of the sea in a good way. And it's like, the, you know, there's so much, man, the place is like alive. That's all you say. You're just waiting. You're just waiting. I'm just like waiting to see a dragon somewhere or to see Merlin's owl come flying in, right? It's just like unbelievable. And I remember looking over at Marianne and she and I had an exchange and having just this moment and then just going into silence and just sitting there and just kind of contemplating like, holy shit, like just fully embracing like the power of the pause, as I called it, like just being still, being, just being, right? Being in that space, in this incredible space with, with, with my incredible Menta and the other travelers who are on the journey with me, the other pilgrims who are on this spiritual pilgrimage. And I'll never forget just looking around in total wonder and amazement. And it was just like, you know, when the Grinch said his heart grew three sizes that day, I just felt my man, my mind, like my mind just kind of like, like expanded and my heart just kind of like, like expanded. And it was such a profound experience. Like I will never, ever, 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 ever forget it. So I'm going to show you a picture, right? Just so you can kind of be there with me. So those of you who are watching. So these are the cliffs, right? These are some of the cliffs. And you can see some of the remains, right? Some of the rocky remains and stuff like this. And then down here, you see Merlin's cave. So you guys, I'm holding up a picture and I'm showing people um, these green, these huge rocky cliffs with like these grass and little trails and pathways with some ruins on top of it. And then this little beach that enters into this, this cavern, this cave, which is Merlin's cave, right? And so I'll just never forget like being in there and just kind of sitting there and, and, and contemplating the magic and the mystery of that place and the mystical meaning the mystical meaning that that place held not only for me, but for the greater world and feeling that sense of like just deep connection. And I kept thinking about Merlin because Merlin is not only considered a wizard, right? He's also considered the magician, but he's also considered a sorcerer, a sorcerer. And I'm doing these air quotes. So what am I always talking about, right? As a spiritual mentor deepening your connection to self, source, and spirit. So this, this character, this legend, this mystical, magical being who I had been reading about since I was a kid, I always loved Merlin. I always loved Merlin. Stories about that too. We don't have all that, enough time though, right? So just thinking about, yes, Merlin is a sorcerer. Source, okay? I think you're picking up what I'm putting down here. And um, the root word of the word source, as it was, is spelled like the S-O-I part of it, that means fate or fortune. Let me say that again. The root word of that is fate 
or fortune. And I just knew that my ass being in that cave at that time, right then, right there with who I was with, it was no mistake. It was no accident. It was no coinky dink, right? And it just somehow, I just sensed in that moment, I was like, this is the beginning. Just like the Knights of the Round Table, just like, you know, King Arthur, just like all the, 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 the lores and the tales and, and the stuff that, that came from this. I'm like, this is, this is the beginning of a new epic adventure for me. And I just felt it, like I felt it in my bones, the way that you feel things in your bones, the way that you just know things. And like the Knights of the Round Table, like I was sitting there and I was like, holy shit, I'm about to go on a quest. Like I'm about to go on a quest. Like it all started so many years ago and here we are coming almost like full circle. Like this is me on my quest, but it wasn't a quest to having to like keep going on these pilgrimages to these sacred sites and stuff like that. No, this wasn't about going out there and discovering foreign lands or like going to like faraway places. This was about taking, ooh, sorry, <laughs> my nose just got wicked itchy. This is about taking an inner journey. This was about going on an inner journey to discover and to know myself. So often we think about, right? Like, oh, I gotta, you know, you, you hear all those stories like, oh, they had to get away to go find themselves. It's like, no, you are, it's not about going out there. It's about going in here. And I knew somehow in that cave, I was like, this, this is it, this is it. It was, a, it was an invitation to me. It was an invitation to me to really remember who I was, to remember who I really am and to get wicked clear on what my purpose was. It was about remembering who I was purposed to be. And I just knew that I had come to this glorious place to deepen my own and I was in my 20s, like I was young, I was still kind of a knucklehead, right? But the door knocked, like somebody knocked, something knocked. And I was awake enough, at least, thank God, oh my God, this knucklehead, but thank God I heard the knock and I was curious enough to listen. And I was willing to take that leap of faith because it was now time for me to really start to take my spiritual life seriously because your whole life is your spiritual life, but really, you know, taking it seriously. And doing the work to deepen my connection to myself, source, and spirit, because that ultimately would be the heartbeat of both my personal life and my professional life. And we're going to get to that part in a second, because all of this stuff, that journey inward, that, that quest that I was on, it was the solid foundation that I was going to build myself and ultimately my business on. And here's the thing. Let me show you, actually. Let me show you a picture of me. So this is young me. This is me, KK in her 20s. Oh, my God. Look at me. This is me standing on the beach. So you guys, I'm holding up this picture of me. I'm in uh, like kind of like baggy jeans and my favorite. I was just telling somebody the other day how much I miss this sweatshirt. This is my favorite gray sweatshirt. I got a backpack slung over one shoulder. And I'm just smiling. Like I'm just grinning this big grin. And you can see the cliffs in the, in the water behind me. I had just come out of Merlin's cave, this picture. And I was a changed person, I'm telling you, right? That smile, that, that smile you see on my face, it was just like, whoo, I felt lit up. I just felt lit up from the inside. Okay, so here's how it kind of all relates, okay? I come back home, right? So th this all happens when I still live in California. Then I end up moving back to the East Coast. And when I come back here, all of a sudden I have to discover what my next steps are, right? I had been, I had worked for Marianne. I had been a personal trainer. I had worked at a magic dinner theater. There's another thing, right? Of course I did. Of course I did. Before I even went, this is another thing. Check this shit out. Before I even went on that spiritual pilgrimage, like years before, I was working at a magic dinner theater. <laughs> you know what it was called? Buckle up for safety. You know what it was called? Wizards. I shit you not, it was called Wizards and I dated a magician for like two years. Of course I did, of course I did. All these divine little breadcrumbs being dropped right at my feet. So not a surprise that I find myself on some quest in Merlin's cave doing this thing. Okay, 
So now Quest and I, we move back east, okay? And here I am, like, what am I going to do with my life? What's going to end up happening? Well, what ends up happening is I become a Kripalu yoga teacher. I started teaching yoga before I got certified. So I've been a yoga teacher for like, oh my God, like 22 years now. It's just so crazy to even say that out loud. So when I come back, right? And I think part of why I'm telling you all this, you guys, is I'm not special. We are all being asked to go on a quest. Your whole life is a quest to return home to the truth of yourself, to return to love, to remember who you are, to know yourself, source, and spirit. I'm just telling you my journey because I think this whole thing about the quest, like when it hits you, it's like, oh my God, I can't wait to tell this story. So stick with me. I got like two more points and stories to make. So it's like, okay, what am I going to do with myself? So I end up, I end up, and I end up, when I say that, I end up becoming a yoga teacher because that literally happens by me making a comment to my yoga teacher at the time. And the way that I was asking questions and the way that my enthusiasm and my curiosity came, he says, it sounds to me like you want to be a yoga teacher. And it was like, whoa. It was like the, the clouds parted and the sun came down and shone upon me. And I was like, yes, right? It's like so much of my life, you guys, has not been planned. So much of my life has been a calling. It is kind of a, an invitation presents itself. And then I have the courage sometimes. And don't, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean I'm not scared out of my fucking mind when I make these leaps of faith. But I was like, yes. And I arranged my life so I could go live at Kripalu for a month so I could become a yoga teacher. But it was like, it happened like this, like last minute. There's not all this, this planning. I just knew, I felt it in my body. And I was like, yes, I'm being called to continue this quest and to go on this quest. So I come back. And for two years, I'm like trying to make it work as a yoga teacher, you know, teaching all over the place, different studios, different gyms, like whatever. And then all of a sudden I realized, and this is a whole other story, but I'm like, I want to open my own place. And what do you think I end up calling my yoga studio? Of course I do. I call it Quest Yoga. So I have this brick and mortar building, Quest Yoga, for 10 years. And Quest, the reason why I called it Quest Yes, a tribe called Quest. Yes, I was on a quest. Yes, Quest, Quest, right by cat. But really what it was all about is I knew that doing the spiritual work that yoga is, living your yoga, it is a quest. Yoga is a journey back to, again, understanding your union with the divine, that you are not separate, that there is perfect oneness. This is about your relationship to yourself and to that which is, you know, greater that perfect union, the perfect oneness. And it's, a, it's an incredible journey, but we're not here to talk about yoga and what yoga means. Although, so here I am again, I have this studio and it's called Quest Yoga Studio. Here's the heartbeat of what I'm trying to say to you guys. So after 20 years of being an entrepreneur and being a creative, I've come to believe, right? We're going back to Merlin's cave. I've come to believe that you can be, there can be no entrepreneur. And the root of that entrepreneur, entrepreneur means one who undertakes. If you are an entrepreneur, that probably lands for you, right? One who undertakes. We undertake a journey. We undertake a leap of faith. We undertake being passionate, having an idea, wanting to share it with the world, wanting to be of service, wanting to help, wanting to be a change maker, a dream creator, an impact person, right? One, we want to be able to help others or lead others or whatever the thing is. We are ones who undertake. But I've come to believe that there can be no entrepreneur if you're not willing to enter the cave. If you're not willing to enter the cave. The cave, as, as Joseph Campbell, right? Going back to the whole hero's journey, which has always fascinated me. It's what all great storytelling contains, right? The brilliant Joseph Campbell has this quote that I love. He says, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. And as entrepreneurs, as creatives, as business people, as people who want to serve, we have to be willing to enter that cave. 
And sometimes we're like, shit, it's a little scary in there. Sometimes it's like, shit, I have to make this investment in myself. Sometimes it's like, shit, am I up to the task, right? I think about the Knights of the Round Table and their epic quest, right? Their epic quest for the chalice cup, right? For that golden cup, right? This epic journey, right? And we're going to talk about the Knights of the Round Table again at another time. But we're all being called on a quest. And so that's what my new thing is that I'm creating. I'm creating a program specifically for entrepreneurs, specifically for change makers, specifically for impact creators and team leaders and community builders and brave story storytellers and the people that are out there doing it, the people that are out there saying yes. Because here's the thing, I can't tell you I'm feeling so called to work with these people. And I'll tell you on another podcast, like why I want to work with the people who are entrepreneurs, who are the ones, you know, in the ring, like Rocky, like doing the damn thing, right? Um, so many entrepreneurs have told me over the years that they feel like they're meant for something more. It's not that they sometimes don't love what they're doing, but what they started off doing, what that initial dream was, right? What they wanted to create. Sometimes the joy has gotten sucked out of it because their business is running them instead of them running their business. Sometimes what they're doing, maybe they're, they're, um, what they created, it, it's not a good fit anymore. And they just feel like, like I am meant for so, so much more. What I'm currently up to doesn't feel aligned anymore. Um, or they long to have a business that's making like a bigger difference in the world. Uh, and sometimes they're like, look, I want to make good money. I know how to make money. That's great. But I also want to be doing good. And I want to feel good. I want to feel happier. I want to feel more content. I want to feel more peaceful. I want to feel purposeful and like my life has meaning. It's not just about the money anymore. As I spiritually mature, it's more about like having meaning. And also the other thing that I see a lot of times too, and why I'm excited about spiritual mentorship for entrepreneurs and business people and leaders uh, specifically is because what so many people say to me is that, and I'm just going to read some of these things that have been said to me because I don't like to misquote people, right? They no longer want to keep second guessing their own gut instincts. They no longer want to keep second guessing their intuition or what feels right for them. Because here's the truth of it. So many people have been mentored and coached on every fucking strategy known to man. And then they come out of that but they still don't feel like that they have clarity, that they trust themselves or that they know how to make decisions based off of their own inner guidance. So often people are looking outside of themselves for the answers and they're trying to make the, the decisions and the solutions, they're trying to find it out there when really the answer lies within them. And that's what the quest is about. It's about helping entrepreneurs come back to a place of discovering themselves, using their voice, knowing themselves, being able to trust their inner teacher. That connection to self, source, and spirit that I said before is what I knew I would be building my personal life and my professional life on, myself and my business upon. And here's the thing. It's a spiritual mentorship adventure. And you can tell, I'm, fuck, I'm just jazzed. I'm just like geeking out because there's so many threads through what I'm creating in this small intimate experience, because it's only going to be tops 14 people. And then like me, okay, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason for that. And again, get into it another time. Cause that's not what this whole episode is about in terms of all, all those minute details, but it's about the essence and the energy of what I'm telling you guys, you are being called to go on your own quest. Part of your quest might be joining the quest, what I'm talking about. But even if it's not, pay attention to the calling of your own heart. Pay attention. Look back at those little divine breadcrumbs that have been dropped in your life to help you discover yourself and to know yourself and to trust yourself. And if that's something that if you're an entrepreneur and you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, oh, my God, I've been saying some of these things, too. Right. Uh, I'm going to tell you. Come join us. <laughs> Because it is, it's only going to be a small group, intimate, on purpose is a reason for this because it's high touch, right? It's high touch. And there's going to be one-to-one -one work with me. And that, that might include if somebody wants that, right? Hypnotherapy. 
to help subconscious reprogramming to create more new empowering habits and new beliefs and which is just life changing like brain training like mind training the, i'm telling you game changer number 1 how do i know cuz i went first cuz i've i've done these things right now i always say I, i'm not saying that um this isn't how do i say this i want this to be something the only people that i want in the quest are people that when you're listening to this story you're like yes this isn't about making a decision from your logical mind. This is more like, I feel called. And that's how I want people to feel in their life about everything, not just the quest, my offer. It's also about who you're in relationship with, the work that you're doing. Maybe you're an employee, but the company you work for, the nonprofit that you work for, you are like, yes, right? But if you're the leader of that nonprofit and you're like, I want a community, I want support, I want spiritual mentorship, I want to look beyond, I want to remember what I have been purposed to be. Who am I being? How am I showing up in the world? How can I come to a place of mm, such deep alignment? Sorry, I just did the alignment hands things, you guys, <laughs> for those of you who are listening and not watching, right? So this is what I'm wicked excited about, you guys, the quest. And here's the thing, the treasure that we seek, it often lies in that cave that sometimes we're a little afraid to enter. And sometimes the first step into the cave is really a leap of faith. So this is what I got going on in my world. Thank you for listening because I'm super duper jazz. You can tell I, I just, um, I'm kind of like beside myself and I'm, I'm wicked excited too. I'm just being honest. I'm kind of like, like a little kid right now. Like, eh, I'm so excited because the response has been really fantastic. And the people who've been saying yes and raising their hand and saying, I want to do it. Um, let me just tell you this. These are, these are some powerful people. And when I think about the Knights of the round table, and like I said, we're going to dive more into that in another episode. But when I think about the Knights of the round table, and the, the beings that sat around that table and what they represented and what they were there to do in the world. This is what I'm talking about. The quality and the caliber of people that are going to be called to this thing. It's like you are, you, you know how they say, what's the old saying? You are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with or whatever. But imagine getting to spend time with possibly 13 other incredible entrepreneurs and change makers people who are bold and brave and courageous and willing to be vulnerable and willing to get together and they want to mastermind and they want to share and they want to get better. Something that one of my um, clients said to me once, she's an incredible leader, and she said, when leaders get better, we all win. So we all have, right? We all have this sorcerer, this wizard, this Merlin, that is there to help and to guide us. And I want to be a part of that experience. So if this calls to your heart, shoot me a DM, go to my website, hit the contact button, shoot me a note, or simply email me, karen at karenkenny.com. Make sure you spell it K-E-N-N-E-Y, karen at karenkenny.com. And you know we'll hop on a quick call to see if it's a right fit for you. But this is, remember, specifically for entrepreneurs, specifically for those who are community builders, team leaders, people who are the change makers in the world, people who are out there in the arena, in the ring, getting it done. And they want to take the experience deeper and they want to change how they've been doing things perhaps. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to end it there. So you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and this journey and bits and pieces of my own quest. And you can see, right? I got my little sword back there and you can see Joan of Arc. Where is she? Right there in her armor. And what does her thing say? It says, I am not afraid. I was born to do this. I can tell you this, you guys. I know I was born to do this. I know I was born to do this work. I know I was born to not only go on my own quest, but also walk along beside others as they go on their own quest. So wherever you go out in the world, you guys, leave the people the place, the animals, the environment, better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. And one of the ways that you do that is to deeply know yourself, to deepen your connection to self, source, and spirit. And whether you do that through working with me, you do it on your own time, you do it in your own way, I celebrate that. And just know I am cheering you on 
I am proud of you. Keep going. I love you. Bye. Hey, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. (laughs) I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days and let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.